worship service, those who are in the sanctuary, those who are in line, as today we get a chance to celebrate that day of Pentecost. God's sending the Spirit so that we can continue to take and realize the promise that God is always with us. And so it's so good to have you all here as we continue at Desert Hills to celebrate. Grace. I thought I could trick you. <laughs> to make Sorry. who? Make and you really do as you continue to reflect the love that God has so inspired and has allowed you to take and share in those that, need, that come into your contact with every day. And so today we ask that you continue to have this blessed time as we worship God, as we remember his spirit, and as we share that fellowship with one another. A few announcements as we begin. Uh, just a reminder uh, that b during the summer, uh, there won't, Christine is going to be at the front desk, uh, but for the next couple months, uh, we've decided not to have it for this during the weekend. And so today is Christine's last day for a few months. And so if you want to say hi to her, say thank you very much, um, but she will be back. It's not like she's going away. But just to note that, that therefore, that all the things about tickets, um, you get to take care of during the week. Fair trade is happening this weekend. Last, last weekend, we got to hear from Pastor Mike, missionary in the Caribbean. And it was talking about how important it was for those that actually produce the goods to benefit from the, their produce and in the sale of that. Well, that's what free trade is, fair trade is all about, is that idea of making sure that we put more money back into those that actually produce the goods. So again, fair trade, chocolate, tea, coffee, oils, it's down in the hallway. Tuesday, May 21st, take me out to the ball game. You don't even have to go to Tucson. <laughs> Tuesday night, we're going to be having a, a hot dogs and park food and then watch The Natural on the huge screen that's in the Fellowship Hall. As people talk about why are, you know, summer should be a time of slowing down. And we just laugh and go, no, it's a time where we actually get to do more things and interconnect with each other. If you're planning on coming, just call the church office uh, tomorrow so that we can make sure we've got enough food. There's a suggested donation of $7, but just come. New members class, this Thursday, May 23rd at 6 p.m. If you're interested in joining and being, being more of a part of Desert Hills, uh, just call the church office to sign up to make sure that we've got uh, the materials ready for you. And again, that's Thursday uh, at 6 p.m. Pastor Barb Rapp is going to be doing a cancer support group. Um, basically for those that are dealing with cancer. Um, it's going to the classes actually beginning the first Monday of June, but the signups are happening now, uh, and there is an ability of a $25 donation for the book and the workbook. It truly is that ability to come and gather with people that are going through some of the th same things that you may, or that you may be going through. Um, if you know people that would perhaps benefit from this, share the information with them. I think that's the announcements for this day. And so let's continue our service with a word of prayer. God, we thank you for the ability to know your spirit. For truly it has come into our world, into our life, and continues to draw us closer to you. Lord, I pray for those who are viewing online, truly that idea of knowing that your spirit so permeates their presence and in their lives wherever they are viewing this. Help us, Lord, as we come together as your children, filled with that promise of your grace, of your forgiveness for the love, and yes, the hope for the world that is so desperately needed. God, be with us now as we bring together our worship, our praise, our thanksgiving for your never-ending presence in our life. This we do and this we pray in your son's name. Amen. Please stand as we sing our opening hymn.
name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. from above and for our salvation let us pray to the Lord Lord have mercy for the peace of the whole world for the well-being of the church of God and for the unity of all let us pray to the Lord Lord have mercy for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast of victory for Alleluia. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to people of God. Power and riches and wisdom and strength and Our bones, and your spirit brings truth to the world. 
Send us this spirit, transform us by your truth, and give us language to proclaim your gospel throughout Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Today's first reading is from Romans. Paul writes, We know that the whole creation has been groaning, as in the pains of childbirth, right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved. But hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. The word of the Lord.
Today's second scripture reading is from John. Jesus said, When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth, who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. And you also must testify, for you have been with me from the beginning. I have told you this, so that when their time comes, you will remember that I warned you about them. I did not tell you this from the beginning, because I was with you, but now I'm going to him who sent me. None of you ask me, where are you going? Rather, you are filled with grief because I have said these things. But very truly I tell you, it is for your good that I'm going away. Unless I go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will pr prove the world to be in the wrong, about sin and righteousness and judgment, about sin because people do not believe in me, about righteousness because I'm going to the Father where you can see me no longer, and about judgment because the prince of this world now stands condemned. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears. And he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it's from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Beloved people of God, here in the sanctuary and online, may the Holy Spirit fill you this day with God's power and God's strength so that we may live each day confident of God's presence and empowered by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's just say right up front, that is a very confusing text from John, is it not? Uh, you almost need a diagram to figure out who and what Jesus is talking about. But what Jesus is talking about is this one that we call the Holy Spirit. Some of you have asked, why do we have red around the sanctuary today? And it's because today we celebrate the fact of the Holy Spirit given to, to the church, to the world, on this day we call Pentecost. This day in which the Spirit came to those disciples locked away in their rooms, afraid. And the Spirit comes as a fire and a wind. And the disciples go out and begin to speak to the world in languages they did not know but in a way for people to hear. It is what we call the birthday of the church. And it's not the birthday of the church as a gathering. It is really the birthday of our adoption as the people of God. The Apostle Paul uses this adoption language, which is consistent with this understanding throughout Scripture. If you look, in fact, in the Old Testament, it is said that God adopted the people of Israel. That this adoption language is how God chooses people to enter into God's family. It is through God's choice to adopt. If you're here next week, we will move earlier in Romans 8, and we'll hear Paul begin to explain this adoption language that he uses in today's text. So I will we'll talk more about that next week. But it's important for us as we begin to think about who the Holy Spirit is, the Holy Spirit is the one who reminds us of our adoption. It's the Holy Spirit is that is our guarantor of our entry into God's family. So today we celebrate this spirit that comes to us to refine us, to transform us, and to send us out in the world. So one piece of the Holy Spirit is it is a reminder that we have now hope and confidence because we know we are the adopted children of God. But the Holy Spirit also reminds us that to be children of God does not mean that we are somehow taken away from the suffering of the world. 
In fact, to be children of God means that we enter more fully into the suffering and pains of this world. Apostle Paul reminds us that as people of faith, we understand the groaning and pain and suffering of this world. We understand this calling in our lives to enter into that and how we ourselves experience those same pains. But we do it not with a sense of of, uh, fear. We do it with a sense of hope because we know the Spirit himself intercedes for us with words that we cannot understand, but yet is there even in the midst of our suffering. That somehow in our suffering... And the suffering of the world, when we engage it, we experience the Holy Spirit more fully. That's the promise of Jesus and the Holy Spirit. That in reality, we live in that in-between time, do we not? In between the reality of Good Friday. We know what Good Friday means for our lives in the world. We know what it's like to be betrayed, to be denied, to suffer to even the reality of death. We understand Good Friday. But we hear and reminded through the Holy Spirit of the promise of Easter morning. Where death is defeated, the tomb is empty, every tear is wiped away. But we are in that in-between time, are we not? We are living in the reality of Saturday. We know Good Friday. But we have not fully realized Easter. The empty tomb. We only have the hope, the promise of God, and the Holy Spirit reminds us of that truth to bear a light in a broken world because we know the truth of what is coming. We know that though it's Saturday, Sunday is coming. So we engage the suffering of the world. So, what does that look like? You may remember several years ago when the Ebola virus hit Liberia and there were doctors from the United States that went over there to help and treat those patients who were suffering. And one particular doctor, Dr. Bentley, went over there with his family and after many months caring for the sick, he himself got Ebola. And thankfully for him, he was able to be flown back to the United States to Emory University Medical Center, where he was given an experimental medicine that saved his life. He was near death, and without this medicine, he surely would have died. But for the next five years, he writes, him and his wife and his family work through what just happened. They work through not just the physical pain, of his suffering and his disease and what it did to him, but the emotional trauma it brought to his family. They said they went there with a sense of of being naive. And they discovered in his suffering that they were called to engage the suffering of those around them, that they continued to care for those in their community of Fort Wayne, those who were on the edge, those who were suffering, they engaged that, and in that they found healing and hope. They discovered that the Spirit of God works deepest in those times of suffering, especially when we are willing to enter into that, to bring a sense of light in this place of darkness and brokenness. See, the Holy Spirit is that light within us that shines in the midst of the darkness. In 4th century, in the Roman Empire, Julian became the emperor after his father Constantine passed away. And if you know anything, Constantine tried to make Christianity the, the religion of the Roman Empire. And though Julian was raised as a Christian, he rejected Christianity And wanted once again for paganism to be the religion of the Roman Empire. So it is told that he brought in some of the pagan priests that ran the temple. And he asked them, why are you not as popular as the Christian community? What is it about them that you're not doing so that you could attract followers as well? 
And the priests told the emperor, the problem with the Christians are they go out and care for those who are suffering. They seem to care about people outside of their community. They're there with the poor. They're there with the outcasts. They're there with the sick. And they serve them. They seem to have a sense of something bigger than themselves. And the priest says, we don't have that in our understanding of our religion. We are here to serve our God, not serve each other. We can't compete with them. Because we can't call our people to care about anyone else. And though the Emperor Julian wanted paganism to once again become the dominant religion, it never did. Christianity took a deeper hold because as a priest reminded the emperor, it had no legs, it had no heart, it had no compassion. It could not compete with the light of Christ that was shining in the Christian community. A community that did not shy away from suffering. But was willing to engage suffering with the very light of Christ. The compassion of God. Because it knew it had hope. It knew that Easter was coming. It knew that though they lived in a Saturday world. God's kingdom was breaking in. And it transformed lives. Something that the pagan religion could not offer. A hope in the midst of life struggles. In the midst of life difficulties. See that, brothers and sisters, in the, in the, is who the Holy Spirit is. The Holy Spirit is the light of Christ that shines within us in this broken and dark world. We are called to be bearers of that light. To shine forth the promise and hope we have in Jesus. That the kingdom of God is here. Though it is not yet fully realized. We proclaim it. We trust it. We speak the truth of it. And we bear the light of Christ to one another. We know God's kingdom is here. We know that God's Will is to bring about the redemption and salvation of all of God's creation. We know that. The Apostle Paul reminds us that though there is faith and hope and love, that in the end there will only be love. You don't need faith and hope when the kingdom of God is fully here. All you need is to experience the deep and abiding and everlasting love of God. It is love that drives us. It is hope and faith that reminds us of that truth. That reality. Even though we live in the brokenness of the world and our lives. We do it with hope. Because we are bearers of light to one another. Bearers of the truth of the reality of God. So as people of faith, we don't look around the world and say, the world is falling apart. We look at the world and says, God's light is shining and we are called to shine that light into this world. We are called to bear witness to a new reality. That the kingdom of God is here. We are to stand in the brokenness and shine the light of Christ that flows in us through the Holy Spirit. To be bearers of that flame. As the early church was. As the pagan priests realized. They could not compete. Because they had no heart. They had no light. But sisters and brothers in Christ. We do. We do because the Holy Spirit lives within you. You are the temple of God. You are the one to bring about that promise of Easter morning when death has been defeated. You are bearers of that life and that promise through the grace and presence of God's spirit. So if you'd like to dig a little deeper in today's message, I invite you to think about this. Where do you see the Holy Spirit working in your life? Where have you experienced the light of God's love and presence and community Brought to your life when you've experienced times of darkness and struggle. And where have you seen it in the community? 
Where have you seen in the world? And where are you now called to bring that same light to someone else? To be that bearer of God's presence and love. So that they too may know the truth about Jesus and his death and resurrection and the life we have in him. Be bearers of that light, sisters and brothers. And may the Holy Spirit be inflamed within you as we share that love with one another and the world. Amen. Let us affirm our faith. We believe in God the Creator, the risen Christ and ever present Spirit. We believe God world fire and wind into a closed room to stir up the hesitant and cautious disciples. We believe God gave birth to the church with the gift of the Holy Spirit, stirring the disciples and us to tell the good news. We are called by the Spirit to heal the sick, feed the hungry, take care of the poor, welcome the stranger, and be a community of forgiveness and joy. We believe the Spirit is still moving, still acting, and still turning the world upside down with love, and that the church is most alive when we dare to cooperate with the surprising, creating, loving spirit of God. Amen. We will now have the gathering of offerings.
psalmist declares in Psalm 104, the wonder of God. Praise the Lord, my soul. Lord, my God, you are very great. You are clothed with splendor and majesty. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. He who looks at the earth and it trembles, who touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. May my meditation be pleasing to him as I rejoice in the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks that you have claimed us and have told us to come to you with the cares and concerns of our lives and of your world. God of new life, bring us hope. New to our prayer list are Paul Kleber, Myron Mithun, Carol Edwards, Janiel Hicks, Harold Hentel, and the family and friends of Stephen Miller and Jimmy Collins. Leaving the prayer list with thanksgiving for healing are Jeanette Johnson and Pat Nilo. We pray for all who continue to be on our prayer list. We now silently pray to bring our own cares and concerns before you, including for those who we know to be in special need of your care and compassion. God of new life, bring us hope. Holy Spirit, we pray that you renew us through your living water so that our spirits are refreshed and nourished. Make us bold witnesses to the truth of the holy scriptures which you inspired. God of new life, bring us hope. On this holy day, Lord, when the church was born in a rush of power, when your spirit caused all differences of language, race, and nation to be transcended, we offer thanks to you for the witness of fellow Christians. Keep us, as a part of Christ's worldwide church, faithful to our trust in you, flexible, in our responses to challenges of this world and open-hearted toward fellow Christians, no matter how widely they may differ from us. Above all, grant us the power of your Holy Spirit that Pentecost may be a present, ongoing reality rather than just a day we simply remember. God of new life, bring us hope. God of peace, we pray for those who have served our nation and have laid down their lives to protect and defend our freedom. We pray for those who have fought, those who did not return to their loved ones, those whose spirits and bodies are scarred by war, whose nights are haunted by memories too painful for the light of day. We pray for those who serve us now, especially for those in harm's way. Shield them from danger and bring them home. Turn the hearts and minds of our leaders and our enemies to the work of justice and a harvest of peace. God of new life, bring us hope. Holy God, watch over all those who are in times of transition. There are many who are graduating from high school or college, preparing with a sense of uncertainty for what lies ahead. Many of us face our own transitions as we deal with issues of health, grieving, or struggling with purpose. Fill us with your guiding spirit so that we might know we are never alone 
in our transition or time of struggle. God of new life, bring us hope. Pour out your Holy Spirit, Lord, on us. May we, together with all believers, be filled with awe at what the crucified, risen, and ascended Savior has accomplished for our fallen world. May we be inflamed to speak and live as those in whom the Spirit lives. God of new life, bring us hope. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who rose beyond the bounds of death and on this day as he has promised, poured out your spirit of life and power upon the chosen disciples. At this the whole earth exalts in boundless joy. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. preparation for hearing the words of institution, I'd invite you to stand as you are able as we hear this promise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. And when he'd given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. And when he'd given thanks, he gave it to all to drink, saying, Take and drink, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people. For the forgiveness of sin, do this in the remembrance of me. Together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. For those that are online, we invite you to take the bread, take and eat, this truly is the body of Christ, broken for all. Take and drink. This is the blood of Christ, shed for you and for the forgiveness of sin that God so in prior gives you this day and always. For those that are in the sanctuary, just a reminder that the dark color is the wine, the light color is the grape juice, there's gluten-free wafers for those who so desire. Come, for all are welcome as we receive this promise that God has given to us through his son, as the ushers direct you.
We pray that the service has been a blessing to those that are in the sanctuary, those that are online. If this is your first time worshiping with us, we invite you to stop uh, at the welcome desk so that we can get to know you and you can get to know all the things that happen in and amongst and around this place. Hear the blessing today. May the living waters of the Spirit flow through your body. The burning fire of the Spirit warm your heart. And the rushing wind of the Spirit fill your lungs. May these blessings inspire you to new words and deeds. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand as we sing our closing hymn. Go with the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Amen. Amen.